into the fiery chasm from whence it came. Your friend Jung, the great psychologist, says that the most powerful religious symbol is the circle. He says the circle is one of the great primordial images of mankind, that in considering the symbol of the circle, we are analyzing the self. And I find you in your own work throughout the course of your life coming across the circle, whether it's in the magical designs the world over, whether it's in the architecture, both ancient and modern, whether it's in the dome-shaped temples of India, or the calendar stones of the Aztecs, or the ancient Chinese bronze shields, or the visions of the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel, whom you talk about, the wheel in the sky. You keep coming across this image. Yeah, it's an ever-present thing. It's the center from which you've come, back to which you go. I remember reading in a, a book about the American Indians called The Indian Book by Natalie Curtis, which was published around 1904, her conversation with uh, a chief. Uh, uh, I think he was a chief of the Pawnee tribe. And uh, among the things he said was, when we pitch camp, we pitch a camp in a circle. When we look at the horizon, the horizon is in a circle. When the eagle builds a nest, the nest is in a circle. And then you read in Plato somewhere, the soul is a circle. I suppose the circle represents a totality. Within the circle is one thing. It is encircled, it's enframed. That would be the spatial aspect. But the temple aspect of the circle is you leave, go somewhere, and come back. The Alpha and Omega. God is the Alpha and Omega, the source and the end. Somehow the circle suggests immediately a completed totality, whether in time or in space. No beginning, no end. Well, round and round and round. Uh, the year. Well, this is uh, November again, you know, and we're about to have Thanksgiving again. And we're about to have Christmas again. And uh, then not only the year, but the month, the moon cycle, and the day the cycle. And uh, this is, uh, we're reminded of this when we look on our watch and see the cycle of time is the same hour, the same hour, but another day and all that sort of thing. Why do you suppose the circle became so universally symbolic? Well, because it's experienced all the time. Uh, you experience it in the day and the year, just as we've said, and you experience it in leaving home, going on your adventure, hunting or whatever it may be, and coming back to home. And uh, then there's a deeper one also, that mystery of the womb and the tomb. When people are buried, it's for rebirth. I mean, that's the origin of the burial idea. You put back into the womb of Mother Earth for rebirth. And Jung uh, kept returning to that theme of the circle as being the sort of universal symbol. Well, Jung used it as a uh, pedagogical device, actually, 
uh, what the, he called the mandala. This was a, actually a Hindu term for a sacred circle. Here is uh, one of the pictures. That's a very elaborate mandala. Uh, you have the, uh, the deity at the center with the power source, the illumination source, and these are the manifestations or aspects of its radiance. But in working out the mandala for oneself, what one does is draw a circle and then think of the different impulse systems in your life, the different value systems in your life, and try then to compose them and find what a center is. It's a kind of discipline for pulling all those scattered aspects of your life together, finding a center and ordering yourself to it. So you're trying to coordinate your circle with the universal circle. To be at the center. At the center.